All right. Welcome to the Healthy Families Row podcast. I am back with my best friend ever, Brittany Hutchison. Hi, Brittany. How are you? Good. How are you? Awesome. Uh, Brittany was on with me on episode 31, and now we're on episode 140. Can you believe that, Brittany? I can't and believe it. The topic then was sibling rivalry, something you and I have both gone through a ton with our kids, right? Yes, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. And Brittany, she's like one of the best moms I know. So I always like to get her on the podcast for these kind of topics because a lot of us are struggling in our parenting and somehow she is figuring it out a lot better than I am. So I always look to the experts in this category. <laughs> that's oh, you. Thanks, oh, that's nice. Yeah. So Brittany, <laughs> Brittany and I, little background, we, we um, met in Georgia, Atlanta, Georgia. Our husbands were both in chiropractic school together and she and I were in the same church and that's where we met. And we were so excited to become best friends because we had kids the same age. Our first babies mm -hmm. were born, I believe in the same year, right? Yep. No. Yeah. yeah. She's barely, she's up. Yeah. Same yeah she had a girl. I had a boy and um, eighth grade now eighth grade eighth grade yes yeah, yeah. I held I held Dax back a year so I didn't know if Hallie was above him in a grade but no they're in, they're both in eighth grade so all right um here's the topic today guys it's called um how to discipline our kids without breaking their spirit this is a this is a tough question because I posted this on Facebook and a lot of people were like uh I'm not really sure but I'm, I'm I want to follow this thread I want to see what people say uh, because a lot of us resort to yelling and screaming at our kids because it works, right? We're like, well, now they're mm -hmm. listening to me. I raised my voice or I spanked them. But then we find that that is really kind of breaking their spirit as a person. So we're trying to figure out ways to discipline without doing that, but also getting the behavior we want. So what do you think about that topic, Brittany? I think it's something every parent can relate to. Every parent needs help with. Obviously, none of us are perfect and we're doing our best, but at times we will make mistakes. So the reminders constantly are really good for me even to revisit and um, remind myself, these are the ways that I want to respond, not based on how I feel in the moment, but have a plan ahead of time so that when those feelings come, I'm like, okay, this is what I do so that I don't beat them down emotionally, physically, mm -hmm. <laughs> you right. know, anyway, you know, because <laughs> it's easy to just act right on emotion and do right. one or the other. Right. And then what yeah. I found when I like spanked or screamed, I hate the way I feel about myself when I do that. Yeah. It's not even so much about, Oh no, I hurt my child. It's more like, I hate whom I'm becoming when I do that. And it, it breaks my spirit in turn. Like it really does break me because that's not who I'm at, who I am at my core. But I talk to other moms who are like, oh yeah, you just got to give them a good spank and they'll, and their kids are so well behaved. I'm like, but how do you do it without breaking your own spirit? Like, I can't do that. You know? Yeah. It doesn't feel good. It's not what you want. And it's not the type of relationship you want with your kids. I got spanked when I was a kid and I feel like it broke my spirit as a kid. So I, I, I think a lot of parents who do spank were spanked as kids too, but somehow they turn off the emotion around all of it and they just know they yeah. have to do it. And I think there is a way to spank off. Obviously they say don't spank out of anger. And I, yeah, I think that could work too, but I still can't do it. What do you think? Yeah, it doesn't work for me. And it doesn't, it doesn't feel lasting with my yeah. kids either. But that's not to say it probably hasn't worked for kids out there, right? Because we know there are oh, some yeah. very well-behaved kids whose parents do not spank out of anger, but use it as a tool to correct the behavior. I just want to throw that out there. There's not, there's no right or wrong way, but this episode is basically for parents who are looking for a way to discipline without breaking their spirit or their kid's spirit. Okay. So let's talk about maybe a book or two we might've read, because I always have to go back to the experts again in these areas yeah. to help guide me and help remind me of how to do things. Are you reading something right now? Have you found something that's been helpful? Um, well, the two books that I've used reference and constantly refer back to with parenting is um, the love and logic philosophy. Um, and they have tons of books in their all different categories for different ages of life. 
and um, peaceful parent, happy kids Hmm. is a really good tool. Yeah. I like both of those a lot. Recently I read, um, and this is not necessarily with um, this specific topic, but I feel like all parenting books weave together. Now that I'm entering this teenage preteen stage and this new stage of life and parenting and buttons are being pushed in different ways that haven't been before. And there's, um, you know, my child wanting to have more independence. It's hard for me. And so I recently read um, this book, How to Hug a Porcupine. Hmm, Getting through the prickly tween years, I think or something was like the tagline. And that was really helpful for the older kids stage. And whenever I'm hitting a wall with my kids, whatever it is, there's tension, the relationship's not good. I mean, I just always go find a book. There are so many good resources out there. So many good. Go read something and you'll have a better grasp on how you're feeling and how you can improve the relationship with your kids. Okay. That's good. Now, what I will say, I'm going to definitely go look up those books. I have heard of Love and Logic. I do have Peaceful Parent, Happy Kids. I did not hear how to hug a porcupine, but I have a porcupine in my house right now. So I need to learn yep. <laughs> the ways because some of these kids, when they turn 13, 14, 15, they really like to isolate and just be on their phone or do their own thing or like tune you out. And this mm-hmm. gets really hard for me because I'm not sure what, where the line is, where I need to take something away or, you know, but then it's like right. always taking something away. And now they don't have their independence because that's like you said, that's kind of what they're fighting for is their independence to have that power. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So the book I'm reading right now is uh, again, this is my favorite one and I'm reading it for the second time. If I have to tell you one more time by Amy McCready, she's good. Um, She goes over some Adlerian. I don't know if you've heard of the Adlerian theory or principles, but it's very much based on how to discipline um, well without breaking the spirit type of thing. So I, I mm-hmm. love her ideas, but let's go over some suggestions. What should we do to maybe decrease or avoid a power struggle? What do you think um, a tip would be there? And then I'll give a tip. A power struggle. Um, hmm. Your kid comes me- to you. They really like want to do this thing. You don't want them to do this thing. And there could be a power struggle there. So I would say taking, taking a step back in the moment to process is something that helps me a lot. So I'm not reactive and also giving options instead of Mm -hmm. just like a harsh, no, you know? Yeah. Giving options is good. Giving choices. That's actually one I had on here, like saying you can either do this or this, you know, right. It's the either or principle that um, in this book I'm reading talks about a lot too, like give them a choice. Instead of this, you can either do this or do that. And then it helps them pick one or the other, but use either or a lot in your parenting. Yeah, And that gives the kid a sense of power, right? Of independence to be able to choose at least something that feels good for you. Yeah. Right? I love that. Um, I have always found with Dax that I have to tell him in advance, kind of like what yeah. I expect. Have you found this? Like if you don't tell them in advance, it's almost back on you. Like, oh shoot, Mm -hmm. I should have told them in advance what the consequence is going to be or what's going to happen here. Or we're going to go here and this is how I expect you to behave. Like if I tell them in advance, it's so much better. Right. Yeah, I think so too. If they know the expectation, it's clear, then it's done. And Mm -hmm. also to go along with that, holding your own expectations to their own standard, you know, kids want boundaries. They want them to be clear. If you bend them every time there, your word will hold nothing. Mm -hmm. So it can be a struggle every time, or it can be a struggle one time. And then they're like, okay, yeah, mom's serious about this. Yeah. What do you think about, um, if they do break, whatever the thing is that you kind of gave the advance notice. Now we have to have a consequence without breaking their spirit what do you think the consequence should be? Like, what are we talking about here? Should it relate to the thing specifically? What do you think? Yeah, uh, absolutely. It needs to be a logical consequence. So for example, they stayed up too late or something like that. They, they, they didn't go to bed when they were supposed to the next night. 
the consequence is the next night they go to bed earlier or they don't get to go with their friend late that next night because they have to get to bed on time. You know, it's the consequence and the um, action are linked. It wouldn't make any sense in the child's mind. They're actually not learning anything. If you're just like, oh, you, you didn't listen to me. You stayed up later than you're supposed to. Now, now you, what's like an off the wall consequence, like, well, even just spanking them. We'll just go with that spank. Now they're just thinking, oh, I get spanked when I'm bad and I'm scared of my mom now versus I need to get my sleep. That's important. You know, it's not that the teaching is done through the consequences. And I found out um, with like not breaking the spirit, the less I talk, the better. Hmm. Like, I don't need to lecture and ramble. I just say it one time and say, hey, when you do X, Y, Z, this happens. And then when they do it, the consequence happens. And I don't need to say anything. The yeah. consequence did the talking. Yeah. And that way, there's no, there's no power struggle. You don't have to engage. Yep. If they're pushing and fighting, you don't have to engage. Like, I'm really sorry. Yeah, that's what happens. Love you though. Yeah. Love you too much to argue. That's one of my key phrases that I learned, have learned from love and logic. And I use it all the time when they start going at me. I love you too much to argue. They just get, they just roll their eyes and they're so annoyed about it. But guess what? The arguing stops. The struggle and that, stops. That is one thing I've learned. Like you have to stay calm. Yeah. If you, cause what they're looking for is to push your button and to get a reaction out of you. If you have kind of told them in advance and then they do the thing or they're either being needy in some way and you know that they can do something for themselves, but they keep asking you to do it. You say, you know, I have all the confidence in the world. You're getting big now that you can do this all on your own. And then you stay calm and you walk away just so you right. don't like be there so they can argue and want to fight you on it and try to negotiate. Right. You can't be there in the same room because they're going to try every time to manipulate and negotiate. And that's yep. where I found like, You've already stated that you have confidence in them. You trust them. You're out. Right. You can do this. What do you think about that? It's, it really is their job to push you back that mm -hmm. they're learning and growing. It's like a budding flower out of the ground. You know, it has to push. That's their job. Our job is to stay calm. If we can just remember that that's our job and to just separate ourselves, it's, it's so hard. It's easier said than done, of course, but like separate ourselves from the emotions don't get wrapped into it. When they, when they do push and they are fighting back, look at it, like expect it. Yeah. Don't be upset when it's happening. And exactly. that, and then just like, my job is to stay calm now. So I'm just going to focus on me and what I need to do. Yeah. Of course they're pushing back, right? They're this, they're 14, 15, 12, 10, whatever. Of course they're going to, even though I told right. them a million times, of course they're still going to do it. If I just right. still have that thought, I'm not like, oh my gosh, they should know. I've told them a million times. But if I just say, of course they're doing this. Right. Like that tells my brain, okay, I just got to go back and retrain again for the millionth time. It's okay. Right. It's, just, it's a process of retraining. The hardest part for me about being a parent is that consistency piece. When mm -hmm. I say you're not going to do something and then I actually give you the thing a few days later and it's been like, and you're supposed to be going a week without this thing or whatever, they don't really like trust me to follow through on the consequence. And right. so they get away with so much more and it's easier for me just to give it to them because I'm busy too. You know what I mean? Yeah. So we say, here's the consequence. It's almost harder on the parent though, to make sure we follow through with the consequence. So whatever we say goes, you know, that's why you should be thinking in advance about these consequences. But that's been my mistake is just, well, saying, it's, just saying the thing and then like not following through on the thing. It's easier in the moment to give in, but we have to have the big picture in mind because big picture, it's, it's way easier to hold your ground. And to do what you say, they learn to trust you. And then they stop pushing in that category as much. You know what I mean? It doesn't mean it's never going to be revisited, but they learn. If we just give in, you're going to have to do it again soon. Oh, you have to do it over and over and over. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure. Now there's natural consequences and there is logical consequences. Those logical ones are the ones the parents are giving, but then there's the natural consequence. Say a kid won't wear their coat in the wintertime to school. The natural consequence is they're cold. Right. Say they forget their lunch. Well, you're not coming to give it to them. So they have to go hungry that day, but they'll remember it the next day type of thing. 
What do you yeah. think about the natural consequence kind of leading the way before the logical one comes in? Yeah. Anytime it can, I say, let that one rule. Let that one rule. And then when you have to do the logical consequence, that's kind of where you have to decide almost in advance. I think like you got to think oh, about yeah. if they're going to push, it's hard and it's hard to do it in advance. Sometimes it's so spare of the moment. And so we just kind of say something that does not relate to what's going on. But let me give you this, let me give you this scenario and tell me what you would do. There's a child in my family <laughs> that is late for school every day, like dawdling, doesn't get her, get her stuff together, doesn't anything, right? So I could say, well, the logical consequence is this car leaves at 7.30 a.m. And if you're not in it, you're walking to school. But obviously she can't walk to school these days anymore. And it's so far away. It's like four miles from my house. And, you know, the way the world is, I don't want her walking that far away. Mm -hmm. um, what, would, what do you do? What's the, what's the logical consequence that relates to that scenario then? Or maybe this one would have to be unrelated. You know, like if you can't get your act together and get out the door in time, do we take away electronics? That's not related, but what do you think? Well, I would suggest two things. One of the things that you mentioned earlier was have the consequence ahead of time so you know what to do but sometimes and a lot of times actually i've found that the best thing to do in those moments is to just say you know what i'm this behavior was not okay and i'm not quite sure what to do about it right now but we're going to talk later about it so that you have time to process it and figure out what feels good to you and a logical or natural way of handling the situation like you don't have to in the moment tell them right now their consequence Take your time. That's my one tip. And honestly, I almost think it works better. That happened this last weekend with my daughter. We had a really bad sibling bullying moment and I was really upset at her. And I just put her in a room and just said, I don't know what I'm gonna do about the situation, but we are gonna deal with, I'm going to be thinking, I'm talking to dad and we're gonna figure out what needs to happen. She, uh, she solved it on her own in the most mature, sweet manner, like an hour later. Wow. So it was amazing. And that worked out really well. It doesn't always happen like that. No. But, you know, other times, if I take the time to think, I can come back and be like, you know what? Um, I've had time to think about it. And I feel like this is how we need to move forward. You know, and that's, and this is what's going to happen. And then I'm able to respond calmly. She's also not in a heightened state either. We're both like neutral. So we can actually have a decent talk. Yeah. Okay. So that was my first thought. And then the second thought was about her being with your, your uh, child being late for school. Um, I would probably think of, well, why is she late? Is it because she's tired? Is it because she's just easily distracted, you know, what's the issue here? And then face the consequence on that. So I wouldn't feel comfortable with my child walking four miles to school either, but I could wake her up at like a really, really early time that she wouldn't want to get up. You know what I mean? And be mm -hmm. like, well, it, since you're not able to get ready with an hour getting ready for school, you got, you have to wake up 30 minutes earlier. And if that doesn't work, we're going to do two hours before we leave for school and just have it like that and say how quickly you move can prove to me when I can wake you up and then we can start moving your wake up time so you get more sleep so I would probably yeah. do an earlier bedtime and an earlier wake up time for my kid if I wanted to do a logical consequence in that type of situation yeah I love that. What I've noticed is this child does not think of everything she needs until she's in the car ready to go. And we have to like, wait, I got to go back in the house and get this and this and this. And I'm like, oh, hello. Yeah. <laughs> like, why aren't you thinking about this in advance? Of course, we should have a checklist by the door or something. Yeah. You know? But then it's like something new pops up in her head. The second she gets in the car, oh, wait, maybe I want a protein shake today. You know, it's kind right. of like, come on, like, let's go. So it's true, but I have these little lists I have for my kids. Um, it says each child in their morning routine and their after school routine. And I just lay them on the counter and I've done, I've done them different ways where they had a whiteboard to move them or just something like that. Um, and they check it off 
And then instead of me saying to them repeatedly, like, have you brushed your teeth yet? Have you brushed your teeth? Your hair's not brushed still? Are you still not brushing your teeth? I'll just say, what is, what's next on your list? Mm. And just have the list be telling them what to do instead of me. I like that. And that has helped a lot with morning uh, chaos, trying to get out the door. Yeah. Okay. And what kids, I mean, you- always reward them. If they're, ha- if you're having a really bad struggle, I would be like, if you get your list done before school by, you know, whatever time you have to leave, if you have, get it done by seven thirty, so we can get out the door on time every day this week on Friday, you get to, you know, pick oh, a I like that to get all the way That from would motivate or, my daughter. Okay. Yeah. yeah. You got to kind of find their, their currency, right? That is yes. awesome. Yeah. I like that idea. I need to, I need to do that more because she likes that too. All right. Let's quickly transition to sassy kids who are being rude and disrespectful um, to you as parents in, in a way, whether it's texting or screaming at you or saying things that are just totally inappropriate, or perhaps they're being disrespectful to a grandparent or something, you know? So what do we, Mm -hmm. how do we handle disrespect and sassy, like just rude? And where is this coming from? Because I'm finding this generation of older kids coming in now, it's more and more like that. What do you think? Yeah. I feel like my littlest one, who's five, is my sassiest. Um, my older kids really haven't pushed that a whole lot. Of course, they're not, they, they do some. So um, I don't know if I feel the most qualified for that. I would just, whenever they starting when they're young, whenever they come at me, like mean or aggressive or whiny, or even just talking like a baby, like in a way that I don't want to talk to them. If they're not talking at me, I will say a couple phrases and I stick to them, which is this. Um, I'll talk to you when your voice is as calm as mine. And I just repeat that. And I'll also um, say things like, I can't hear you. I can't hear you when you talk that way. I don't understand sass. I don't speak sass. Yeah. You know, and just not engage until they're, and, and always separation will do the trick. You know what I mean? Like, it sounds like you need to, you can say all those words you want in your room. You can sass me as loud as you want outside. But in this house, we don't do that. I don't, that doesn't sound good to my ears. I can't, I don't understand. You know what I mean? Those types Mm -hmm. of things. Yeah. But I haven't really dealt. I know teenagers can be extremely sassy and mm-hmm. horribly mean, and I haven't had that yet. Oh, Ooh, you're lucky. Cross my fingers. I mean, yeah. She, so of I'm, course, going through, I'm going through this whole unfair thing. Like, oh. they, this one child feels it's unfair and that we love this other child more than the other because this other child gets more time on electronics or whatever. But the thing is, this other child isn't as rude as this other child, you yeah. know? And so this other child, gets things taken away quite often because of his sassy, rude attitude. And then he sees his sister getting it and he's like, that is so unfair. And then he hates her and has so much resentment resentment for her. And then he hates me and he'll like say the most rude, like I'm working out at the gym on Saturday and I'm getting a whole lecture from him in text messages, you know, just like telling me how to parent and you're not paying attention and you don't, your brain is so small type of thing, like rude stuff. Right. Yeah. And I'm like, dude, I am done right now with you. Like, I can't do this right now. Like calm yeah. down. I'll, I'll come home and we'll, you know, we'll make it fair by taking away all electronics. And now nobody gets it. You know what I mean? Like right. if there's something that's, that you're going to fight over and find unfair, let's just make sure you don't get it. And I don't even know if that's the way to do it. Cause I feel like it takes away more of their independence, but the behavior sure is better without it over the long run. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I am struggling in that area right now of just, Um, backbiting and sarcasm and disrespect and rudeness and all of that. So I'm trying to figure that out. Well, you need to read the porcupine book, Heather. Yes. You need to read the porcupine book that will help you. um, Cause I think it helped me realize what was normal teenage behavior and when it went too far and how to, uh, how to talk to them and approach things in a way that's not going to send their quills up. You know what I mean? Like, Mm. And there's just one thing that it, that I remember huge from that was it's just like, don't do the defiance dance is what they called it. Mm-hmm. Just don't engage. Like if they're being defiant, not doing it, it takes two people. So That's he can so send all the texts he wants to you and he can say all the things he wants to you. And 
it's real hard because we're human beings and we don't want to be treated certain ways, but like, just leave the dance floor. You know what I mean? Like don't engage. And then when they're calm and when you calm, you can talk about it. I don't think that it's wrong for you to obviously when they're not hyped up and you're hyped up to address it and be like, the way you talked to me was not okay. And so I don't know the right consequence, but if we're going logical, it could be like, you're not going to have a phone for a week because you can't text kindly, but we can try again in a week and see how your texts are. Yeah. I don't really know, but it's yeah. just a suggestion. It, you can get your wheels thinking at least about mm-hmm. what would work. And then the thought that comes to my mind is, oh no, he's going to hate me for doing that. And now he's not going to talk to me. He's going to isolate even more. And now when he gets older, he's going to rebel and do all the things I don't want him to do. And now he's going to leave all the good behind and do all the bad. And now I have an adult child who never comes home and talks to his mom. Like all these thoughts come to my head, right? Mm -hmm. Of Like if I do this, he's going to push back this way and totally rebel. How do we as moms, like just take a deep breath. And parent from how we know is like true to our core the right way, but also like let go of this could happen type of thing, you know? Oh, that's so hard. I mean, of course, we're all going to feel, have fear in parenting and have worry and stress. I mean, it's a huge part of the game. I don't think you can avoid those feelings. I think you can just try to center yourself and, and remember that it's not real. Like you've just, that's your anxiety talking. That's not Mm -hmm. a real fact. He's not not going, he's not not talking to you. He's not rebelling. He's not an adult child who's not coming home at Christmas. You know what I mean? He's none of those things. He's a kid who needs boundaries right now. Like that's the truth. What is the truth in the situation? Find that and then hold on to that. Then can I ask you this? How do we as parents set boundaries, but let go of control? Like so much control. This is a tough one for me too, to know the boundaries, but not feel like I'm controlling every little thing he does and being a helicopter parent. Cause I feel like that's what he needs right now. You know, it's, it's hard to like, know what that line is. And that's where I struggle the most. I think. That's a hard one. Of course, really hard (laughs) because I think I struggle with that too. You know, I'm just like, I'm real quick to be like, if it's not working, get rid of it all you know, or something like that. You know what I mean? (laughs) Yes, I do. Instead of figuring out a, a, a good way to work it in and have a balanced relationship with whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Um, so, okay. What's the question again? So how do we set boundaries without totally Mm -hmm. controlling every little thing? You know what I mean? Yeah, that's, I mean, that's just a hard balance to try to like, in. I think we what have we to let about, go. We have to right. let go and be like, they have to they have agency. They have to be able to make their own choices. And I have to be able to trust them. But how do I trust them when they've broken my trust so many times? And I got to create these boundaries now. Like, right. Really confused. Give them as many options and choices on, in things that don't matter. You know, if you want to wear that horrible shirt sure, every single day and it smells or something, you know what I mean? Like, yeah go for it. But when it's something that is true to their character and to your morals and values, Mm. that's when you don't, that's when the line is hard. Yeah. But when it comes to other things, you know, I give as much freedom as you can and let them explore and be whoever they want to be just while keeping true to your core values. I don't know if that makes sense. That is so good. Yeah. Okay. So I wrote that down. So you just got to, I think you're, what you're saying is to keep the boundary strong around your core values and how you want to kind of run your household that way. Keeping, I like to say, keeping the spirit in my house, right? Like if you're doing things to like bring that yucky spirit in, like I'm going to set a boundary there for sure. Right. It isn't coming in, in, in no way, no how. Right. Right. Um, But in the little choices here and there and the freedoms that maybe don't matter as much, you just, you let them have that. You have to learn where you can let it go. There's some things that I would love to control more that I don't like, let's just talk about food, for example, Mm -hmm. and you being a health coach, we can totally relate on that. You know, if it was up to me, it would just be fruits, vegetables, healthiest, most yummiest, nutritious lunches and breakfast all the time with no fun, you know, according to them. (laughs) Yeah. But I've had to learn to like, let go a little bit. And when they are making 
those decisions that maybe make me cringe inside, just be like, I can't fight this. Like I have to find a way to allow some freedom here so that there's no resentment. If you're mm-hmm. trying to have rules on every little tiny thing, they're going to resent you. But there's other things that I can't let my boundaries down on, like the media we let in our house, for example. You right. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That is going to have a strong boundary because it affects the char- their character. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. So like I have this teenager now that all his friends have watched The Office, have watched Stranger Things, and I personally I'm not comfortable like I guess I'm a little prude that way but I'm like there's stuff in it I've seen I'm not comfortable with the dialogue I'm not comfortable with this and that now if we get vid angel I'm comfortable with you watching that you know maybe we can mm-hmm. edit some of that stuff out that's fine but he just feels so left out of his group because all of their parents whether they're religious or not are letting their kids watch these things you know and I don't know what yeah. to do with the parent that's saying no when it's happening within even high standard families like what do I do as a parent here to keep like I feel like I'm so controlling do I just let him watch the show so he can have something to talk about with his friends but then there's stuff I'm not comfortable with you know right I I think I found that if you take the time to explain they're pretty receptive you know you can I tell my girls all the time when something like this comes up I understand that that probably really sucks that you don't get to do a b c or d that your friends are all doing like I remember being your age and feeling that way and feeling left out. But I will never make a decision on, about you based on what other people are doing. Mm. I'm going to do what feels good to me. And I don't feel comfortable with that because I can make a ton of mistakes in my life, but I can't mess up on raising you. You are my most important person. I have, I'm in charge of who you become, you know, mm-hmm. and I can't mess up and I love you and you're too precious to me. And that doesn't feel good to me. Yeah. So we're not going to do that. And you know what you, you can always, I tell my kids this too. You can always blame me. You can tell all your friends. I'm the worst person in the world. You can tell them that my mom, this, that I'm like, blame me. If you're too embarrassed to say that you can't do something, just always blame me. I'll be, yeah. the, I'll, I don't care if they think I'll I'm be cool the punching not. bag. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just let me know. Yeah. Yeah. That's a really good thing too. I think it's just, um, you feel guilty as a parent, like I should let them because all these other people are, are doing right. it. You know, maybe I should just like get you. Sometimes you question that, like maybe I should just get, maybe I'm being too controlling. Right. Yeah. I should just let them watch this because they could easily just sneak out and watch it anyway at a friend's house. You know, well, one of the things it says in the porcupine book <laughs> is to kind of gauge what other kids your child's age are doing. So I'm not talking about media necessarily, but let's just say that he wanted to walk to like Circle K and back with his friends and you didn't feel comfortable with it. But most teenage kids are doing that. And then maybe you can self-reflect and be like, okay, am I being controlling here? Do I need to give him some freedom? Is there a way I can allow him to do this that I'm comfortable with and he's comfortable with? Like, how can we find a compromise here? So then maybe you're like, okay, I'll let you go, but you, I need you to be home in an hour you need to take the phone and leave your GPS on. And I need to, you know, whatever that is, mm-hmm. when it comes to stranger things, you have the great idea of getting, or, or whatever show the great idea of getting vid angel. That sounds like a perfect compromise. Like, yeah, I know this is important to you. A lot of other kids are doing it your age. I'm not fully comfortable, comfortable with that. So let's find a way we can both work this out. Exactly. It's a win-win, right? Like yeah. um, Stephen Covey talks about having a win-win when it comes yeah. to your parenting. And that, and I've also, I just want to mention, you know, as we're wrapping up here, Amy McCready in that book, if I have to tell you one more time, she says it's so important to give that mind, body, soul time to each child, which is 10 minutes, twice a day, individual time to each child. And they typically have less and less problems with siblings, with you, but just Mm -hmm. needing, they just really need your attention. And sometimes they're going to get it if it's bad attention or whatever, they just need that attention. So how, how important has it been like for you as a mom to spend that one-on-one time with your kids? That is key to everything. Yeah, it really is like, and it's taken me a long time to figure that out. But whenever a kid is struggling, when our relationship is off, when our connection is off, like one-on-one time is the healing balm to any kid issue. It really is especially Mm -hmm. if I feel disconnected from them, you know, something I like to do is just pull them from school for lunch. 
Hmm. They think that's the coolest. And it's just, it's only like, yeah, it's only like an hour, maybe 30 minutes of my time. But they're like, oh, and I don't tell them, you know, I'll surprise them. Like, let's Mm. go to lunch together. So good. Or just a little bit of one-on-one time like that. Like anything you can do to build the relationship. I say relationship first. Yes. And then everything else can fall into place because it all starts there. Yeah. And this mind, body, soul time, it's a little harder with teenagers when they don't want to spend time with you. And you're trying to figure out how how do I just like ease my way into their life to sneak in and spend time? Like, what am I doing? What does that look like? And for me, I found sometimes it has to be late at night. Like when I don't want to get out of bed, but there, I know Mm -hmm. that they're still awake, kind of hanging out and I got to go like sit down and just ask them questions and hang out and get into their world somehow, you know, it's inconvenient, usually an inconvenient time for me, but it's not going to be fun for you. Yeah. Like it's not about you. It's not. So you just have to be like, oh, cool. You're watching whatever dumb show. Can I watch it with you? Tell me about this character. Or mm-hmm. like my daughter is like super into K pop, which is K-pop. just yeah. not my, my thing. Yeah. But I will just ask her about show me, show me, show me some dance moves. Let's listen to it together. And it makes her feel special. You know, it's about yes. her. And then it's, the time put in is, is worth it. It ends up benefiting me, just not necessarily at that moment, watching a bunch of Asian boys dance, but like Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. later on our relationship is better when I need her. So totally. Yeah. I have found for Dax, like you have to find what they do like, and he likes, he's into real estate big time. So he loves to like, he wants to be a real estate agent too. And, and so he just would love for me to take him and drive him around these fancy neighborhoods and look at houses uh-huh. and he'd be like, Ooh, this is what I like about that one. I like the door on that. I like the windows on that. He'll totally just uh-huh. like go off on, on real estate stuff, you know, which is That's kind of adorable. fun. I, I like to do that too, of course. Yeah, <laughs> and I know. And I'm like, imagine and stuff. <laughs> so even like going out to an ice cream and going and driving around, you know, that, that would mean a lot to yeah. you just have to figure out what your child loves kind of what they're into at the yeah. time and and do that with them but she recommends two times a day 10 minutes each child if you can squeeze that in if not 10 minutes a day each child and if that if you have too many kids every other day but try to get get them all in you know that time. it's hard it, you would think 10 minutes oh that's not you that would think that's easy it's right actually so hard it is so hard I I'm like okay 10 minutes that's 40 minutes two times a day for me I I don't really know but so, an, yeah. an easy, quick way to connect I've found is just at bedtime. If you can't do yes. it any other time, just say, hey, can I lay with you tonight? And just spend five minutes in each bed, play 20 questions or just read a book, you know, just would some you rather, sort of, yeah. would you rather? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I agree. That's great. Okay. So I, what are the key takeaways here for not breaking a child's spirit? What do you think um, listeners can really take away from this today? Well, I guess first off would be what we just last talked about, you know, connection number one. We should have said that at the beginning, yeah. but it's true. <laughs> mm-hmm. The next is give them choices, options, right? Mm-hmm. Don't, choices. don't do yep. so much talking. Let the consequences do the talking mm-hmm. for you. Um, what else did we touch on? We talked about telling them in advance. Like Yes. Like- you know, if, if you're going to behave this way, this is going to happen just so you know. And then, yes. and then when you have to give the consequence, you give it and you walk away, you're calm. You're never escalating. You're not going to give in to negotiating or whining or any of that. Also, That's- if you don't have the consequence to take time, take time away. You don't have to give it right then in the moment. It's okay. Mm-hmm. It's okay to revisit. Yeah. It's okay to put them aside and say, I really have to think about a consequence here. What you did yeah. and what you said was not okay. So let me think right. about this. Yeah. yeah. What if your child is coming to you just real quick and they're telling you something in confidence that they did and you're like, well, that's not honest or, you know, that's not good. Like, and now you kind of want to be like giving them a lecture, but they're like telling you this in confidence. Type of thing. Right. <laughs> like it's, that part's tricky too, as a parent, you know, it is tricky. Cause you're like, you need to go back and make that right. You know, if it was a shoplifting thing that your friend was doing and you, and he gave you that candy bar and you're, but you didn't shoplift it, but you got it right. or whatever. Like sometimes they're in these scenarios where like, they're like, isn't that cool that I got this free treat? And you're like, well, how did you get it? Like what? Yes. I, I would, I would say approach it with curiosity when you're in that type of moment, 
is like, huh, how do you think you got that? Well, don't you usually have to pay for stuff? You know, instead of let them come to the conclusion on their own as you sort of probe with the right questions. Yeah. So you can't really come at Adam with a huge, like that was wrong. That there needs to be a consequence. Cause obviously they're involved yeah. in something that they don't understand is like bad in a lot right. of different ways, you know? And whenever anyone's attacked, whether it's you, me, even as adults, I mean, our walls go up, our defenses go up. There's no room for teaching. There's no room for growth, but if I recently read something about, about this and about dealing with teenagers and it, it was I just remember approaching things with curiosity. Mm. And I was like, I got to remember that in my head. Just because ki- teenage, mm. teenagers say the dumbest things. Yes, they do. And even just last night, Eric and I, we were going through our junior high yearbooks. And the things that I said and did I'm... to people in those pictures are like so embarrassing. And it's it, so embarrassing. it gave me Yes, it gave I had to like, throw all of mine away, Brittany, because I was like, if my kids get their hands on these, they'll see some of these things people wrote in my yearbook. Like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> I had people that I had like X'd out their faces and wrote the meanest things about them or just <laughs> things like that. And I, I'm like, okay, it gave me empathy for my kids because we're struggling with a couple of things with my older two different, like just kind of irreverent comments that they keep making that are bothering me and I keep having to reinforce and be like okay this is this is normal at this age (laughs) me even seeing mine was like okay this is normal at this age and um I'm just going to try to approach it with curiosity versus finger telling you know what I mean like how dare you you know that you blah 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 exactly yeah you know yeah totally so Okay. I love all of that. And I love you. And we need to get another lunch mm-hmm. date on the books for the end of September or early October. Okay. So for sure. Let's do it. That sounds good. All right. My favorite parent. Okay. Friend, love you so much. Love Thank you. you so much for this chat. You're amazing. Thanks, Heather. Talk to you soon.